What's good, YouTube? In the beginning of my 3D career, my goal and aim was always to get as realistic as I can with my modeling and everything. Now, there's a couple things that you need to know to get realistic anything. Proportions, topology, texture, and lighting. If you master those four things, you'll be a rock star. It's one of the videos I wish I had when starting my 3D. So in today's video, we'll be going over how to create this ultra realistic oversized sweater. By the end of this video, you will know exactly how to model the base of the mesh, how to use the sculpt tools to get those realistic wrinkles, and also how to UV unwrap your oversized sweater so that we get realistic textures. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. All right, before you start any project, the first thing you want to do is collect some earth. Especially if you are a beginner in Blender, the most important thing that I can do and also help you improve your work is actually breaking down how to create something. So let's go ahead and drop this man figure. You can find this model on my Patreon. It is F-R-E-E. -E. But not only will you get this base mesh, but you'll also get these rigged animations. What you can get on Mixamo is nothing really special, but it's in the pack if you want it. Let's go ahead and add a plane. There we go. And just want to move it a little bit forward on the Y. The one for view. Want to scale it down. Now, what we want to do is project the plane onto the mesh. So how we're going to do that, we're going to go to our snapping tool up here. We're going to hit this little icon and go to face project. The icon so it's blue, which means it's activated. Once we got that set, we're good to roll. So we're going to go ahead and go back to our view, go to edit mode. We're projecting on to our mesh. Here you go. Now, one thing that you're going to notice is that when you're doing this, you'll sometimes lose the mesh that you're working on, but that's a very quick fix. We're going to go to our object tab. We're going to scroll down to visibility, viewport display, and we're going to go to in front. Wherever you rotate your object to, you always see it in front. So right now, we're just going to make a rough collar. There you go. Just a rough outline. We just want to get the outline of this right here. There you go. We just want to line this up. I'm going to shoot it one more time. Right, perfect. So double G to slide our versi. Now, the reason why I want to make sure that we have a line going from here to here, because this is what we're going to use for our seam when we're UV unwrapping it. I want to go ahead and bring this up like that. So let's go ahead and slide this over just a little bit. All right. So with all these selected, what we're going to do is extrude it down to about here. The reason why we're extruding this down to about there, if we look at our reference, you can see that there's a seam right here and a seam on the other side. So let's go bring that down just a little bit to right there. All right, perfect. And what we're going to do is actually throw this out. There you go. And we're just going to, there you go. Make sure these are all even. All right, now for this, I'm gonna go ahead and extrude it again. Okay, we can screw this all the way down right there. It's fine. Now, if we hit S, zero z there we go we get something more straight and i'm gonna go ahead and start working on this part two and then three and just rotate this a little bit all right and then we want to put a loop cut right here and another loop cut now i want to make sure these are straight also all right perfect so making sure that we have good topology to scoped on is extremely important and especially when we start to uv unwrap this so let's go ahead and move this over just a little bit right there. Okay, that's good. All right, let's work on this just a little bit more. All right, so now that we have this part complete, let's go ahead and select all of this and select the top. And we're just going to, actually we're gonna select everything and we're gonna make sure snapping is turned off. I'm going to extrude it out. There you go. All right, so you see how it's very concave. What we're going to do to fix that is s zero y and that makes it all straight going to invert it and hit hide there you go so now we only have this back and go to our back view and with snapping turned on gonna make sure everything is snapped correctly there we go and just fix everything did not snap on the mesh properly there we go sometimes it won't snap properly so one thing that you need to do is just turn off your snapping and just push it out individually now we're going to go ahead and unhide it so we're going to invert it again and then we're just going to move this out just a tiny bit so if we select this first face and go click here pick shortest path all you gotta do is control left click there we go and then we're just going to go ahead and delete that faces and then make sure this is deleted also everything else looks good now one thing we need to do we need to align this up with the arm just a little bit better so we're going to go ahead and select this right here move it out there you go 
Okay, we don't want that pushed in like that. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and fix this part too. So it's just double G to bring that down. Whenever you're doing this, you always wanna think even topology. So we wanna make sure that our seam is intact. So what we're going to do is move this down just a little bit. So our base is coming together. What we're going to do now is just extrude our bottom. You can make it a little bit larger and just scale it up. And then we're also gonna do that here. Gonna go ahead, select it, E, about right there, and then just scale it up. So you should get something that looks like this. And we just wanna fix it so this is more even. Now, if you notice, looking at an actual sweater, if you got a t-shirt on, whatever, the front is always dipped, but the back, as you can see on my shirt, is always to the neck. So that's a quick fix. We wanna go to our back view, and we just wanna make sure snapping is on. Gonna select all of these, shape zero, Z, that's fine. And they're just gonna bring this up to about right there. That's fine. Let's see how it looks from the top. So we, we just wanna make sure that we're getting a proper arc. A cut right here. There you go, just to give it a little bit more geometry to work with. All right, so once we got that set, let's go ahead and adjust these points to make a little bit of room, slide that over. There you go, that looks good. And we're gonna put a loop cut right in between here. That is what we're going to use to UV unwrap our sleeves. Just add a loop cut here and we're just going to extend it out. So I'm gonna turn on O, which is our proportional editing, and I'm just gonna scale this up. Not too much, there you go. Go ahead and scale that up also. Scale it up, there you go. I also wanna scale this up. One thing we could do is just select all of them and then hit S, S, X, and then we get something that's straight again. We're also gonna do these for these two. We're gonna go to our backside, make sure this side is straight. Oh, oh, make sure this is straight too. So now that we're at a good spot, let's go ahead and uncheck our in front visibility. Now let's work and refine this mesh just a little bit more. All right, so A, with everything selected, I'm gonna right click smooth vertices, make everything smooth. I'm going to right click and shrink and flatten. Just bring these out a little bit to their like right there. All right, so we have our sleeves. Let's go ahead and bring this in just a little bit more. Actually, we're gonna bring it up. There you go. Right there at the wrist. I'm gonna move this over, follow the hand just a little bit more. All right, so we're gonna go select this and just bring it in just a little bit. There you go. We're gonna go to our front view. We wanna make sure that our bottom is straight. So we're just gonna bring this down. There you go. It's not completely straight, but that's fine. And let's go ahead and fix this part. All right, perfect. And I'm gonna slide this over just like that and slide this over. All right, so let's go ahead and select everything. I'm going to hit E. There you go. Make sure everything just screwed it up. Just bring it in. So now that we have that done, let's go ahead and add a mirror modifier onto this. There you go. So once you have the mirror modifier activated, you can see that it's not mirroring properly. So what we need to do is in the mirror object, click this little eyedropper and click our base mesh. And you can see our base mesh is now what we're mirroring across. So one thing we need to do in the merge section is just turn this all the way up. There you go. Let's bring this down just a little bit. Make sure we hit the on cage icon so we can see what we're doing. Okay, let's slide this over. Slide this over so it's directly in the middle. All right, so we need to turn our merge down. Make sure we're not merging anything that we don't want merged. All right, so this is how your base mesh will look. So we're gonna shut off our mirror modifier for a second and we're gonna go ahead and unwrap the model. So we're gonna Alt and left click that line. We need this one going all the way down. We need this right there. Then we need this bottom piece. Also need the hands and then let's see how. Okay, so right now, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and mark seam for these. You mark seam. We're gonna scale these down real quick just so we can get that middle line. There we go. I wanna make sure that's not selected. Make sure that's not selected either. So we're gonna go ahead and select this line up here. Make sure this is selected. That's good. All right, make sure this back is selected. Then we'll hit U, mark seam. So just to go over what we did, we got one for the collar, got this for the shoulder. Might have to select these two, hit hide, so that you can grab the selections that we need for this. But we need to make sure that this is selected too. U, mark seam, and then let's unwrap it again. Unwrap, and we'll stretch. Okay, that's looking good. One thing you need to keep in mind, when we mirror this, for example, our cuffs and the bottom of our sweater and also our neck, we need to put a seam at the back. So let's have them selected and we're gonna select it right here. There we go. And we're gonna U mark seam. All right, so now that we have everything selected, 
let's go ahead and apply our modifier. Make sure we're in object mode and apply. So once we apply the modifier, let's go ahead and unwrap it again. Minimal stretch. All right, so once we're done adjusting our UVs, you should get something that looks like this. We're gonna go ahead and add a multi-res modifier. And we're just going, while we're in object mode, subdivide three times. So you can see, once we added the multi-res, it shrunk everything down. So let's just go back and make these bigger again. Make sure we're editing this side too. Now what we're going to do is go into our scope mode. Now, before we do anything, we wanna to go to face set, initialize face set by UV seams. This will break up the mesh into different parts based on our UV maps. All right, if you never scoped it in Blender, we're gonna go over some of the most pivotal tools that we're going to use. First thing, if you wanna size up your brush, you can either do it by the bracket keys or you can hit F and scroll up and down. Now, if you hit Shift F, scroll up and down, you have zero. Zero means no opacity. 100% means full opacity. Now, right now I have the grab brush. So what this brush does is that it takes a point on the mesh with the fall off and grabs it. So you can do cool things like this. And then we have our basic ones. For example, our draw brush, you see we do that. And then cool thing about this, if we hit S, we can and put the strength up, we can go ahead and smooth this out. All right, so most of the tools that we're going to use if we scroll down is the claw simulated tools. You have a whole bunch of tools, for example, we have the grab. So you can see how it's simulating the cloth. So I see this is what we're going to, that's one of the tools that we're going to use. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Now for the first tool that we're going to use and focus on, let's go ahead and work on the sleeves. We're going to use this grab planar cloth, but before we actually do it, we're going to go ahead and open our menu up. We're going to scroll down to our advanced tab and make sure that face set selected. How face set works, everything that is color is its own mask. For example, if I take this brush and I just go down, it won't affect what's around it. If I take face set off, now you can see how everything is being affected. So now let's go ahead and shade smooth. All right, so once we got that setting down in, let's go ahead and make the folds of the thing. Now looking at the base, lead, we can see that the wrinkles are very, very large. All right, so we're just going to make the brush a little bit bigger by using F, there you go. We just wanna scroll down. Now don't go too crazy because you can do something like this. Make sure our model is being seen. All right, so we're just gonna take it and then lightly go down. And then a trick that I found, if you go up and then you go down, you get more interesting wrinkles. There you go, that's fine. So we're just gonna go down with this one, go up again, then go down again. Now let's clean this up just a little bit. We're gonna go to our grab tool. I wanna make sure it's big and just grab some of these points. Now, I don't want the shoulders to be too broad, so I'm just gonna bring it just a little bit. Maybe bring this up just a tiny little bit, there you go. And then we're also gonna take this side and just move it over, just, and we we'll go back to our planar brush and we we'll go to the left first, then to the right, and then down, down a little bit. You can see how we're getting those big folds. And if we go to scope and go back to three, you can see, you can see it's more pronounced. Now let's go ahead and do some adjustments. We also want to push these in. So I'm going to turn off face set so that I can pull both of these together. There you go. And I'm also going to pull this out so it's not intersecting with it with each other. There we go. We just want to fix this hand right here. Don't want it intersecting that much. And we're just going to bring these down. Push that in. Push that in. So what I'm trying to recreate right now is just getting those vertical folds. All right, so now that we got some micro details going on, let's go ahead and continue working on our bigger folds. We're gonna drop this down to two. There you go. So we're gonna bring that down. Also, make sure face set is selected. All right, and then we're gonna go back to three. All right, this might be way too much, but that's fine. Just adjust this. There we go. Wanna make sure that nothing's peeking through. All right, so I don't really like how big this is, and that's fine. What we could do is just Go to our smooth brush and just smooth this detail out. There you go. All right, so let's go ahead back to our planar brush. And right now it's really just playing around with the planer, the grab tool, and just going back and forth until we get something that we like. There you go. I really like that fold right here. I like how it's going into the other one too. Let's pull this down. So I'm just gonna over inflate this so that we can come back with our planer. All right, so now let's go back with our grab brush. Push that in just a little bit. Turn our first set for our grab. We're gonna grab both of these right here. So I wanna work on the sleeves just a little bit more. 
And another tool that we can use is our drag cloth. So I get left or right, you can see how we're getting some variations. Let's just put the strength up so you can see what's happening a little bit better. There you go. Get some interesting folds. Let's go back to our planer. There you go. Now let's go ahead and work on the back. So remember that trick that I taught you, bring it up a little bit and then bring it down. If we go too crazy, you can have it dancing. So we're gonna take our grab brush and just get some more interesting folds. There you go, let's have some pinching right there. When you're doing folds, the folds have to make sense. Like you can't just have a random fold, like that's a little exaggerated, but you can't have a random fold right here, right? Wait, like this, cause it's like, okay, where is the tension coming from? Cause that's what makes a wrinkle. That's what makes the folds is it's the tension or the extra fabric in the clothing. This right here doesn't make sense. So that's why it's always good to have reference and always go back and forth with the reference. So for example, you can see how on this one, we have a, a nice fold right here, but that's because the actual garment is going up because of his hand. So those are things that you need to pay attention to when you're doing this. So we're just gonna use our grab, I'm gonna push this out. So right now it's a little flat. If we look at the front, very dynamic, a lot of big folds, but in the back, we're not getting that. So what I'm gonna do is just push this out, not too much, just push it out like that, push it back in. No. Then I want to go to drag cloth and I just want to drag this down. There you go. Making those big folds. Then we want to go to our train. All right, but we don't want it flat like this where it's almost collapsing in itself. So we're going to go to our grab tool and we're just going to bring this up. There you go. Bring it up. All right, so what we're going to go ahead and work on adding some thickness to our sleeves and also our neck. We're going to use this cool tool boundary. Gonna make sure that face set is on. And then we're also going to scroll up under bend deformation. We wanna make sure that it's on bend. And you see where the white line is, that is how much is bending it. So what we need to do is just go ahead and just scale it down just a little bit. Gonna go ahead and hit F, scale it down. And now you see where that white line is, is where it's bending. So let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. There we go, right there. It's the perfect size. So now you can see how we're getting some thickness on the bottom. So it's not just flat. Now we're gonna go to the cuffs. Same thing, wanna zoom in just a little bit and we're gonna go rotate it in. Just a small amount, perfect. And now you can see we're getting that thickness. All right, so now we're gonna work on the neck. Same thing, we're just gonna bend it down just a little bit. And now you see we have that thickness that we want. Now we're just gonna go ahead and work on the final adjustments. We're gonna go and use the grab brush, which is shortcut G and just pull this out just a little bit. There we go. So that it's not intersecting with the mesh. And once we got that, let's just give our model a look around. Everything is looking good. All right, so that concludes today's video. I hope you guys learn a ton of new tools that you can use on your 3D journey. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Have a blessed day.